Make a date with Reverend Dr. Ebenezer Markwe at 6 a.m. from Monday to Saturday on Graphic Online via Facebook and YouTube as he expounds on matters of faith. Graphic Online, truth and accuracy every day. My name is Reverend Dr. Ebenezer Marquis of Living Streams International and uh, I bring you Matters of Faith with Graphic Online. Matters of Faith as a daily devotional that is supposed to bring you truth, um, the truth of God's Word in, in a very simple way, in an applicative way, something that you can take and work with it in life. And um, today I, 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 I want to take a good look at another portion of Scripture and that is John 11, uh, 39 to 45. John chapter 11, 39 to 45. You know, sometimes when I read scripture, it's very, very interesting. And it is interesting because I see humanity at, at play and humanity at their best. Now, John 11, you know, that particular story captures the story of Lazarus, the good friend of Jesus who died. And the Bible said Jesus, I mean, was called. And Jesus, I mean, your friend, well, you were told your friend was sick, but he took his time and all those things, the keche and all those things before he got there. You know, sometimes God, forgive my word, but God is a show boy. <laughs> he, get the, he, he likes the situation to get worse. And then when it gets worse, then, then he comes to town. You know, the guy is sick. That's the time to step in and do something about it. But he took his time. And though I even tell the disciples were reminding me, that your friend is sick. And then he said, yeah, yeah, leave him, leave him alone. You get it? And when he got there, the friend was dead. I mean, why would you allow somebody to die before you go and raise him? I prefer to heal the sick than to go through the extra faith of raising the dead. This is what Jesus, he took his time. And sometimes I wonder, I mean, the God we serve, it's, it's, I just don't know how to fathom him out. I don't know how just to reason. He does things that look like, what? This is crazy you're running away from the Egyptians and then you lead them to a Red Sea. No good general will ever do that. Leads them to a sea where they don't have boats and, and then the enemy too is behind them. And that's not good warcraft. You get it? That's not good warcraft. You don't, you don't do war that way. You don't wage war that way. You must, you must always leave a way of escape, an escape hatch for your people. God didn't do that. And Lazarus, he waited until Lazarus died in three days. And then when he got there, the Mary begins to talk, and uh, that's also something else. Mary begins to talk plenty, 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 plenty. They say, take me to the grave. Now when Jesus gets to the grave, then this is where it becomes very interesting. Jesus gets to the grave. And when he got to the grave, then he asks them to do something. He says, roll the stone. Roll the stone. So God asks them to roll the stone. Then Mary who had earlier on said, I believe in the resurrection of the dead, and blah, 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 blah. Roll the stone, and then Mary then looks at Jesus and says, Ha! Huh? Hey! Say, hey, 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 hello, excuse me, say, hey, boss. It's, it's three days. By this time, the body is stinking. That's what she said. Three days, the body is stinking. Now, Jesus, God's command was very simple. Mary. Roll the stone. And then Mary was saying, no, 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 no. By this time, the body is thinking. There were two things. God's part and humanity's part. The part of divinity and the part of humanity. The part of God was, I'm going to raise the dead. And the part of humanity was, you roll the stone. Instead of Mary doing the part of humanity, she began to question whether God would do his part. So you roll the stone and leave the raising of the dead to me. But you are worried about whether I can raise the dead. When the simple thing I ask you to do, roll the stone, you ain't done it. That's who we are. And that's what we do. Sometimes, I mean, sometimes for some miracles to happen, there's something you must do. Or some blessings to come our way. There's something you must do. And sometimes our obedience is more important. 
You obey what God has asked you to do and then leave him to do what he alone can do. So, you know, it doesn't make sense. If God were to raise Lazarus and the stone had not been rolled, how would we know that Lazarus had been raised? How would we know? God said, roll the stone. And that's what Mary should have done. Be busy about what is yours, your responsibility, and leave God's responsibility to God. And sometimes we are fixated with God's responsibility and our simple responsibility that we need to do, we begin to wonder. Same thing happened to Peter. Launch out into the deep. Ah! There is no fish in the sea. Just get your boat on the, on the sea and see what he will do. Try God. Let him fail. Mary, roll the stone. But she won't roll the stone. She's complaining about what God will do. By this time, the body is thinking. Oh, that's what we do. Most of the time, the little things like sowing, the little things, the little seeds of faith, the little acts of obedience, the little things that love your neighbor, the little things like work with your hands. He blesses the work of our hands. You won't do it and you spend all the time in prayer asking God to give you a breakthrough and you are lazy, you won't do anything. Come on, for goodness sake. Roll the stone and then let's leave God's path. Make sure what you need to do, you have done it. And then leave the rest to God. Do your best and leave the rest to God. Amen. That's what they used to say. So guess what? You rolled your stone. You do your best. And then leave the rest into the hands of God. So hey, kaba kaba, roll the stone and see the miracle happen. God bless you. See you next time.